As valued sponsors of Bread to Win, it's been great watching the fortunes of Cambridge studs Brendan and Joe Lindsay in the past few months, with Probabile taking out the Epsom in Sydney, their new sire Hello Yume Zane winning the Diamond Jubilee Stakes at Royal Ascot, and new foals on the ground for their current stallions, Al Manzor and Embellish. Starting with the retirement just this week of Hello Yume Zane, of course he added to the Haydock Sprint Cup win last year with the hugely memorable Diamond Jubilee victory at Royal Ascot this year. It's just wonderful he's retired south and he'll be down in New Zealand next season. Yes, uh, Kevin, Kevin Ryan rung and he said, look, the horse has been up since November last year and he did what he was supposed to do, which was obviously win that Diamond Jubilee. And in his last race, he just didn't finish off with quite the zip that we'd liked. And he said, look, I can, I can get him to the race at Royal Ascot, but I can't guarantee that we're going to win it. And he said, you know, he's done enough. He's did everything we want. And so we just made the decision. The best thing for the horse was uh, he's done the job. His sire by Danehill Kodiak has had another great year with a pre-morning winner in Campanelle. He brings some great speed to New Zealand, and I'm sure that's going to be enticing for some Australian mares too. Well, you'd think so. Um, you, because of that Kodiak sideline, that and it's just worked so well that Danehill sideline. So what you know, you'd you'd hope so. But I guess the exciting thing for New Zealand is that we haven't had a, a sprinter of that quality come down to New Zealand before. Um, you know, whether it come from Australia or or from England. So it's pretty exciting. So we're pretty confident that we'll have the horse filled up uh, virtually straight away uh, from from the feedback we've already had from local breeders. Probabil takes the lead. Take us through the wonderful win of Probabil in the Epsom at Randwick last week, the championship mile of the Sydney Spring, and obviously it was getting into the evening in New Zealand. Well, it was 7 o'clock and it was our daughter's birthday, so we had the family out at the farm in Karaka and with the grandkids and one thing or another, and of course it's, it's a long day waiting till 7 o'clock. And you know, we, you know, obviously you've got your hopes up like every other owner has in the race, and. Uh, you know, the, you look at the, the, the statistics and uh, wide draws and how many mares have won the race and then you start second guessing what's going to happen. And Karen McAvoy run in the, mor in the morning, he said, look, I'm going to be positive. He said, I've got to be handy. And, uh, you know, he rode the horse perfectly. So, and we yelled our heads off and to win an Epsom handicap, I mean, it's a time-honoured race. It's a signature race. Um, it's a long time since in New Zealand a horse has ever won that race, you know. So, and, you know, you've got, um, you know, the great horses like Sunline and Superimposed before you that are household names and uh, I'm sure probably will be a household name in the future as well. She's a, just such a fabulous mare. I'm, I'm curious about why you were so determined to get her. You were the underbidder of course to David Ellis from Tiarco but what made you get David to on sell Probabil to you as a yearling? Well we were the underbidder and, and uh, we got to the level and we walked out of the sales ring and I, I said to Henry, um, I used a, a couple of words you know like if this and if that and if the other thing. And he said, listen, why don't we just go and talk to DC and, and uh, see if he'll uh, on sell it. So we grabbed it, um, David when he came out of the ring and we said, look, would you on sell it to us? And he said, on the condition, of course, that we train it. Um, and that started the association really with uh, Tiakao. So I think we've got about 12 horses in work now with Jamie. So um, they, you know, they've been, they're just so good to deal with. and. You know, everything they do is just so professional. So it's been a very, very rewarding association for us. And a great boost for our man Zor, not just Coolmore buying his sire Wooden Bassett, but also with Wooded, a son of Wooden Bassett, another son of Wooden Bassett, winning the Prix de Labbe on Arc Day. Absolutely. And I think that uh, when we brought our man Zor down and put him in front of New Zealand breeders, they were saying, who's Wooden Bassett? But certainly Coolmore understand who Wooden Bassett is, and I think he'll stand for a big fee next year. But it's probably given his pedigree a bit of um, uh, the big tick, if you like, with Cornwall getting his side. But Wooden Bassett just keeps on going. But El Manzor had a pretty good night at the sales again last night. Uh, you know, he was he was a top first season sire at, in, uh, at the Deauville sales, and he's a top first season sire at Tattersalls. So it pretty well tells you he's leading the right sort of horse. And uh, obviously, we're looking forward to um, the yearling sales this year because uh, we've got a few to sell. but. More importantly, our breeders that have supported the horse have also got a few to sell, so we're hoping they're going to be popular. And yeah, I see you did stay in lot 177 with Aradetraham to support Almanzor on the track as well. The Colts from a Galileo mare from a good German family and, and will be trained in Europe. 
Well, that was because uh, we wanted to do something more with Kevin Ryan, who trained Hello Usain. So Kevin will get the horse to train. And we wanted to do something with Kevin, which was, I guess, our Joe's and Mize and Nicholas from uh, Interham saying thank you uh, to Kevin and to try and keep that association up with him and his family is saying thanks very much for uh, training a Group 1 winner and here's another Group 1 winner for you to train. Not an option's about to draw them back. And you've had some good winners lately in New Zealand and Australia with more to come, so it's an exciting spring ahead. We've got some really nice horses around us. You know, we just love the racing and, uh, you know, yes, we've got a, quite a few horses which Joe and I race together, but we enjoy it. Probably what she does is she puts that adrenaline back into the body that's, you know, through COVID and you sort of, your shoulders start to round over and then you go off and win an Epson handicap and all of a sudden you start pouring through the sales catalogues again and you're away, you know, so bring it on. And speaking of COVID, how do you see the NZB Caracas sales in 2021? We don't know who will be able to be there, but the international buyers have great relationships with people on the ground in New Zealand. The New Zealand Bloodstock did a survey around a lot of the Australian trainers and certainly syndicators and bloodstock agents about whether to delay the sale. And they're all very adamant that they wanted the sale to be held in January. But they all made the same similar comments, which Andrew Seabrook passed on to me, is we'll be there. We might not be there in person, but we'll be there on Zoom or through an agent, or but we'll be there, we will be buying. You know, I hate negativity, and I just hate it when everybody says, you know, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. I think we'll have a very good sale because I think we've got a reputation, uh, which we've had in New Zealand for many, many years of breeding good quality uh, thoroughbreds and... Um, why wouldn't the Australians come and try and buy them off us? Um, and, you know, I think we'll have a good sale. Joe, another huge result last week with Probabil in the Epsom. Has the voice returned? Not quite, Caroline. It's, I'm still a little bit croaky. I mean, it was, we, I just shouted so loudly. I, I, as she was coming around that turn and I had a front-on camera shot of her and she was, she was just sitting in the middle, I just knew that she was going to do well and I, we, that's about when I started screaming, like literally screaming. It's so much so one of our neighbours came over to see what's going on, the horse win. <laughs> and now looking ahead to the Cox Plate, the Australasian Championship, the best of the best, and she fits right in. That was the goal from the beginning, you know, when she first went to Australia. To actually be where we are now, being able to get to the Cox Plate, it's quite exciting. We'd love to be there, of course, but we'll probably do the same sort of thing on the 24th like we did last weekend. It may be a slight bit tougher race, this one, but being seeing what she's done as a, as a mare against the boys um, at the Epsom, we think that she may be able to do that again. Isn't it incredible just how different a year 2020 has been for Cambridge Stud compared to last year? Oh, look, it's been it's an amazing um, camaraderie here, big family. We just had a, a breakfast this morning with one of the boys on the farm that won the Young Achievers Award, Julian. It just showed that everyone, everyone's on the same page here and everyone's really happy with the, with the way things are going and the breeding season's going very well and the boy, you know, the two stallions are going very well. Um, so all in all, it's, it's a great place to be. Scott, looking at your European star sire, Al Manzor, he'll have some lovely representatives again from his Southern Hemisphere crop this year. How are you feeling about the foals on the ground so far? Yeah, we couldn't really have asked for things to have gone any better to this point with our men's order, to be honest. He's been really well received. He's got great mares. He's started breeding his third book this year, which is another full book. The progeny's been well received. Um, in terms of my job this year, it's been a salesman's dream, really. There's been so much uh, good word around the place and people that are advocating for his stock from last year. It's just really compounded year two and three that people are breeding back again. Everything's gone um, as, as well as we could have hoped. She's sensational, has got the lead from Bayron. Well, some of the new Almanzors in 2020 we looked at include the She Sensational filly. The dam was a four-time Group 1 winner, including the Zabiel Classic. She was a place getter in a Queensland Oaks and won a Hollandale. And this is a half-sister, this filly, to John Sargent's House of Cartier, who was fourth in the angst on the weekend. Yeah, you can't ask for much more than that out of the broodmare, really. As you said, she won 12 races, four of them at Group 1 level. First foal's a stakes winner, and as you mentioned, the second foal should probably was a stakes winner in all but name as well. So to have a, a mare of that calibre uh, in his second book is, is fantastic. As you'll see from the vision, you know, she's produced a lovely filly. She's all quality, plenty of leg to her, and um, now we're very grateful for uh, Bill Gleeson and Peter Gillespie, who own the mare, to have supported Almanzor, and um, I hope they're going to be really happy with the product they've got on the, on the ground.
The dam of the next filly, Chenille, was also an Auckland Cup winner. She won the Hawke's Bay Cup and she's by the tough New Zealand sire, Pentire. Another top class race mare. She won the Group 1. She's owned by Tony, Wayne and Vicky Pike, who have been great supporters of our Manzora. I think we featured one of their foals on this uh, segment last year as well. So it's, it's a, again, a great brood mare to have um, in the book. As you say, she's by Pentire. She was a really good staying mare herself, so you would hope she's going to produce something with some real classic credentials and again a, a, a really bold type of filly, lovely frame and uh, plenty of depth and scope to her so she looks like she's got a, a really good frame to progress into and, and will make into a lovely filly as she gets older. An enchanting beauty and impressive win. The enchanting beauty Colt, the dam is an Australian bred mare by Sebring who won several times in Adelaide so has a double cross of Danehill, that's a really lovely match for her with our Manzor. Having two crosses of Danehill, one of the real benefits with our Manzor's pedigree is he's, he's a complete out, outcross and we've certainly had a lot of Danehill mares go to him or, or mares with Danehill in the pedigree and it seems to be a really good physical match as well. He's a good example, this foal, um, very much like our Manzor himself, a good size, plenty of strength to him, well conformed and, and nice and correct and he's owned by some Australian clients including Seymour Bloodstock so it's, it's been great to have um, their support and uh, I think she's due to head back to uh, Australia shortly to go to stud. So, you know, it's another El Manzor in the system over in Australia and, um, you know, hopefully will be a, a benefit down the line. Embellish, of course, by New Zealand's current champion sire, Sava Beale, who, of course, is the sire of your champion, Proba Beale. He was a 2000 Guineas winner in New Zealand and another star in the Tiakau colours. And, of course, Tiakau and the Ellises are supporting him here at Cambridge. No one knows Embellish better than Tiakau do. David Ellis selected him as a yearling for 775000 he raced in the Tiakau Tangerine and obviously went on to be a Group 1 winner, but it's great to have that support of theirs continue through to his stud season. Fashion Ford's a, a Pentire mare, which is, he's been more of a staying influence, but this foal's actually quite a sharp, um, strong foal. And uh, yeah, again, the Tiakau, I think, are breeding another eight mares back to embellish this year. So it, it's a real benefit to the stallion, and I think you know, they're going to have the benefit of having some nice foals by them as well. So it's all um, working out nicely. Decadence going out after Markle, who refuses to lay down. Markle comes from a good, fast Australian pedigree. She raced in Brendan and Joe's colours and won a race here for Lance Noble. Uh, and this is her first foal. As far as first goal, foals go, we're, we're really delighted with the result. Um, as I mentioned, Embellish seems to be putting quite a lot of strength into them. And, this is a, a good strong foal, a good strong hind quarter, and it looks like a you know a, a type that will get up and go and be quite forward and physical. So um, you know he's one of the nicer foals, and we're really happy with the result for a first foal out of here. The embellished Grand Wish Colt. Now the dam was a, a two-year-old city winning two-year-old, and is a half sister to the Galaxy winner Griante, and a close relation to Grand Journey and Proliferate. She showed a bit of ability. Um, she was a yeah, city winning two year old in Australia for David Brideoak. She's a half sister to Griante, that was a Group 1 winner in Brendan and Joe's um, colours. Um, and she, Griante has um, produced our $800,000 sale, sale topping yearling a little while ago. So, you know, it's to be fair, probably um, a quality of mare that not too many $5,000 stallions would see. But um, she went to him in his first year, and, the, you know, for a first foal, it's a, a really nice tight. Embellish stands at a lower fee but we've, we've tried to breed some really good mares to him, we'll support him on the track and um, you know that's a big part of hopefully making him a success and, and having that Zabil, Zavabil sideline carry on into the future. And your sadly lost and much lamented stallion Tavistock, he has some lovely young horses coming through. My My Marie is a mare that uh, Brendan and Joe raced, she got a bit of black type and then produced Marky Mark was her first foal who's a champion two year old. Um, she had actually missed three years in a row before she went to Tavistock and um, got back on track. Uh, we've got a nice yearling in our draft by Tavistock going to the sales this year and he, the foal is a lot like um, the yearling, quite a more compact, muscular, strong type than sometimes you'll get with, um, with Tavistock and still probably needs to come up in the hocks a little bit but a, a nice filly and, and is indicative of the, the quality of mares that Tavistock got in those last few years and you know I think it's something we can look forward to with Tavistock is the legacy that he's going to leave with his sons and daughters. I've got no doubt, you know, we'll be seeing his name and pedigrees for a lot long, lot, many more years to come. The Tavistock special diamond filly, of course, from one of the great old Sir Patrick Hogan Cambridge stud families. So it really is great to see Brendan and Joe and the team continuing to produce lovely horses from the family. 
Yeah, we couldn't do a Cambridge stud segment without uh, featuring him there from the eight carat family. As you say, it's been uh, such a huge uh, influence here at the farm. And um, this mare in particular has been one of the more successful producers. She's had, well, I guess she's quite unique. She's had four black type horses. None of them have won a black type race, but they've all got black type. It's a deep family. And this is a lovely style of uh, Tavistock filly, you know, a lot of quality and scope about her. She's um, you know, a really nice looker and her full sister, uh, made 975,000 when she went through the yelling sales uh, bought by China Horse Club and her name's Heart of the Ocean. She got black type last season and stays in training at four. So there's a lot to look forward to and you know this filly will have um, you know a lot of commercial appeal and a lot of residual as a broodmare in the future. So the future of these foals, are they likely to be sold or will some be retained and kept for racing and future breeding? The clients do different things but speaking for Cambridge Stud, um, you know first and foremost we are commercial breeders. We've got about 70 yearlings going to various sales. But on top of that, Brendan and Joe love to race and, and we're selective about retaining particularly fillies and certainly with Al Manzor's first crop, we've identified some nice fillies to retain, um, to put into you know, leading stables, because I think that's part of, you've got to support them with the mares, but also you know, the racing system and making sure that they end up in the right stables so that they get a chance. So that's certainly something we're doing for Al Manzor. And, um, I would imagine it'd be very similar with Embellish. That'll be a real benefit to him, you know, going forward as a stallion as well. <laughs>